one. Whoa, that was way too close. But my name is Penelope Pop, also known as Winnie Wong, and you're watching another episode of Go Talk Virtual Hangouts. This is a really unique and interactive TikTok live in partnership with Globe Prepaid and TikTok. Uh, today, we're going to be recreating the way you learn, so do stay a until the very end of the video as I talk about today's topic, which involves starting a business in graphic design. There are a lot of things I'm going to be covering, so call on your friends, family, people who are interested, and let's have fun while exchanging knowledge that you can apply once you start your own empire. On that note, let's settle down so you guys can listen, take notes, answer questions, I mean, ask questions, and enjoy the next era. Our, our. Let's go talk. For those who are seeing me for the very first time, my name is Penelope Pop, also known as Winnie Wong, and I'm a teacher, illustrator, and the person behind Penelope Pop Art. Today is a real talk between you and me because I'm going to be telling you things you don't actually usually hear, but no worries because everything I'm covering will all definitely help you along the way. Most especially now that we are in a time where we need to be creative with the way we start businesses and in order to survive. So let's get started with the business of design. Hello, hello. Hi, Winnie. Hello, hello. Rex. Hi, Say hello to everybody. What brings you to this discussion? Hello everyone, uh, uh, Rex Intel here. Most of you may know me as uh, the volleyball player, pero just in case you're wondering, I'm also very passionate about arts, uh, most especially painting. This quarantine, kasi I set up my own studio sa baba where I spend my time creating my own pieces and be of help to those who are in need. And kung nagtataka naman kayo, bakit ako nandito? That's because I want Winnie to face off with me. Para naman, syempre, makapag-warm up ka muna before your lesson. Uh, so what kind of face off are you talking about? Uh, madali lang daw, Winnie. We're about to practice our skills in art and we're gonna be given a word per round and one will draw and the other one naman must guess the word that's being drawn. And the one who gets the most correct answer wins. Huh. All right. So I guess you're going to guess first, right? Sige, sige. I'll guess first. Pero ready ka na ba sa materials mo? Yeah, I got my pen and my paper. Okay, so if ready ka na, uh, timer will be set to just a minute. So please draw quickly, okay? Okay, when Guardian Leviosa. <laughs> okay, when you're ready, timer starts in three... Two, one, go. Uh, cake, uh, donut, 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 one point, uh, grapes, ice, a dog, uh, uh, uh cupcake, cupcake, cake, cupcake. Uh, pass. Uh, uh, movie, movie, movie. Camera. <laughs> Are you intentionally guessing <laughs> so you can? Uh, phone, phone, cell phone. <laughs> uh, wait, wait. I can't see. No. It's time. <sighs> Hello. I'm here and I guess how many points did I get? Two. Yeah, so that was pretty bad. I mean, he didn't get popcorn or anything. That was so easy. And I even drew the stripes to really represent that. <sighs> oh, well. So um, what else did he guess? He guess, didn't guess the... I thought I drew the iPad quite well. I'm back. I'm, back. I'm sorry. 
yeah. how many did I guess? How many did I guess? Ilan? You guess two. Two lang? Okay, okay. <laughs> you didn't get the popcorn? I really tried to draw the stripe so that it represents like a movie theater. I thought it was I thought it was cupcakes. Well, I was cupcakes, so... Yeah, but uh, what kind but, uh, of cupcake has like three different like stuff coming out? <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, actually, uh, so I guess, but that's a really good warm up exercise. So the score you have to beat is uh, two. Pero mama na yung turn mo because I think it's time for you to get down to business. Yeah, it is time to get to business. So good luck. Uh, go Muna so you can start with your lesson and see you later. All right, see you later. All right, guys, um, that was pretty fun. But let's go straight into talking about branding. Uh, one of the main things that a lot of people focus on now is really being able to brand yourself because it's everything is so saturated, so competitive. And when creating your style, it's all about helping people identify who exactly you are. Like you just need to stand out in the crowd and being able to pinpoint a certain style and for people to identify that will really help them kind of think about you if ever there is an opportunity for you in the future. Actually, you think that it might be limiting you, but in fact, it's really providing you with all the opportunities. And it also is a clear way of setting expectations between you and your client. Um, it limits the possibility for disappointment and really allows you to work with a more focused mindset. So, I mean, it's actually more difficult if you're tasked to try a bunch of different styles. And then if you're starting out and you don't feel comfortable with committing, then you can try, probably start with three styles because I really think that being able to have a set style will create some boundaries and set some expectations between you and your client. So some things that you have to remember is that um, to maintain consistency because everything is really exciting when you're just starting out, everything looks brand new and um so you really need to commit to how often you're going to post. Everything is exciting when you first start, but the challenge is really to overcome and maintain the same level of energy when the hype is all over. The best is actually create as little buzz as possible, which will give you the chance to kind of trial and error with a small number of people. And once you build more content to foster a habit of consistency, you can start inviting more people over. When setting up your socials, there are things that you really need to keep in mind, and that is setting awareness and getting people to really understand who you are and what you are as a brand. Um, so the first thing that you should expect is emailing. I think that emailing is a great form of creating a formal response and scheduling meetings, storing documents online, and also just keeping track of what people have said. It's like a track record of what is has been said. And you can always look back and then kind of take people on it if ever things were miscommunicated. Now, with website, a large number of Filipino population view most things on mobile devices. So one thing I really don't recommend is setting up a website unless you're really selling items. It's really just not worth it to build a website because you have to consider like, you really have to consider designer, coder. If you're really not a designer and you don't know how to create a user experience, that's just not something that you want to put all your energy on. And in terms of Instagram, it's a quick way for you to share your brand and also start a smaller business in which you can message with ease and less formality. Um, and it's also a good way to build awareness and also post images. So then we have Facebook, which is a place you can build community and where people can discuss. I know a lot of people are on Facebook to kind of chat and get advice and um, Working on a, creating a platform and connecting between your accounts is a great way for you to get started. So 
now we're going to move on to kind of the finances and the boring stuff you have to do. These are really things that I didn't think about when I was setting up a business, but it's so important. And I'm going to just like glean through it because I just want to be able to help you understand the process of it all. So one thing you really want to consider when you are starting out your business is just buying materials, right? Um, a huge part of the investment comes with costs. And thinking about the materials and equipment you need to kind of get started um, needs to be added into your investment cost. So obviously, with that in mind, you really need to consider budgeting. Use an application that will help you with financial calculations. And I've actually been using this um, application online called Wave. And it is a free application and it really allows you to kind of write down invoices where you can create invoices, send it directly to your client, and then you don't need to like create a header or whatever. And you can also keep track of the invoices if they've read it, if they've um, actually, uh, if, if they're going to send it back. And I'll also remind you if you need to track the income that is coming in through those invoices. So the next thing about budgeting is really being able to track down your expenses um, and income. And this is an entire feature which allows you to track down your expenses and income all at the same time. And it even creates like a graph and like hierarchy of how well you did in a month. Because, you know, like with design, it's really just on and off. And yeah, so um, in terms of registration, it's a really arduous process. And I would really recommend seeking professional help. I did because I'm just not aware about it at all. And um, it's really worth the investment and time. It saves you a lot of time. And um, time is money, right? And in the Philippines, this registration process will take like a year or so. Um, I'm serious. And um, however, I've created a list, list of things based on what I have in my registration binder so that you can really keep track of what you can do. Um, so, uh, so there are a lot of things and documents I recommend, recommend keeping it online and offline. So online, I store my documents on Google Drive and then offline, I really just put it on my registration binder. My registration binder holds everything that I need in terms of um, what I need to kind of look through if our client needs this particular document. And um, of course, before you register, make sure to register yourself to the government. So having, okay, a valid ID, a TIN number, your bank account, SSS, Pug eBig, Phil Health. Gmail account, all of that is necessary, especially if you want to get paid. And um, of course, applying for a business permit and more. So um, it's very important for you to apply for a business permit, official receipts, and other government documents. And if you have trouble or don't know where to start, you should seek a third party person. I actually have a third party accountant kind of help me get started with this. You just need to pay a certain fee and then they will really guide you through the process. It's really better than finding out yourself. Um, but of course, I have created a checklist for you. So you don't need to, if you really want to get started on your own, you can write down and take down notes. So here are some basic things you need and think about when you want to apply. And I'll expand on it more in my master class. But number one is business permit, your certificate of business name and registration, certificate of registration, authority print, and also applying for municipal permits. And then um, I and then I guess. This allows you to print out your sales invoice, delivery receipt, official receipt. And this is very important, especially if you want to receive any sort of payment whatsoever. And then when it comes to like, when it comes to hiring, if you plan on hiring like more people and if you're expanding your business, you need to get them registered to SSS, Bug eBig, all the things that you yourself had to get registered to because if you want to make sure that 
um, you have deductibles when you're paying your employees. Those are all things that you need to consider. Whew. I know that um, it's a lot that I covered and uh, I know it's a lot that I've covered. So like, we just need to make sure that you just write it down and um, I'm going to slow down a little bit more because it's just a lot to cover. And um, so when you are applying for a bank, once you have all your registration necessary, you should create a bank account. I cannot stress how important a bank account is for your business. And this is what you can keep track of formally of what goes in and out of your business. So um, here are some essential things that you need when you are applying for the bank. So for internet banking, I highly stress the importance for this, especially now that we are facing like a pandemic. Um, you should start register your employees and suppliers to make transfers a lot easier for you. And then to be able to, to check how much you have in your account and um, also a checkbook to write large amounts to a cer certain supplier and then a bank book. So these are some things I really wish I knew before registering because it's just a lot easier to do all these transactions online and being able to keep track of it rather than go line up in a bank. And at this point, it's really just safer and better to do everything online. So keep that in mind. Okay, so the last thing I wanted to discuss was rates. So one of the things that a lot of people ask me about is how exactly do you rate yourself? And I actually struggled with that because I guess money is really taboo. Um, it's really just a no-no when you want to discuss how much you're earning. But I think that to have an open discussion and being able to identify what exactly it is you need to kind of know what you're worth is to have open discussion about it. And yeah, so I, I definitely think that you should be able to ask other pe people how much they're earning, of course, if they're comfortable with it. But if people aren't comfortable or if you just don't know and you don't know where to start, I definitely think that creating a rate card is very important, especially if you are starting out. So how exactly do you rate yourself? Of course, it's really hard to set a rate, because, but the best way to start is always to consider how much you have spent. So a while ago, I talked about like making investments and um, I talked about making investments in terms of buying the materials that you need and the supplies that will really help your business grow. Those are things you need to consider adding into the costs. Then once you have considered your like initial cost of investment, then you multiply it by two because you have to consider supporting yourself and like feeding yourself and paying for any utilities. So um, I say it times two and divide it into a year. So if we do the math correctly, it's like expenses times two and then that's the amount you be earning in and then you divide it by the number of months. Yeah, I mean, very basic, um, but some costs that you can consider. So I'm just gonna list it down, like expenses of supplies for the month or your utilities and your electricity, phone bill, rent, water, um, expenses for traveling, which are very limited, but you can consider expenses for your laptop or upkeep. Um, however, I really recommend meeting clients online because usually these meetings last for only what, 10 to 20 minutes only. And all of that can be done really just online now. And yeah, so another thing, that, another expense to consider is food for your month and then expenses for credibility. This is only applicable if you have already built a portfolio and you've worked with many clients. But if you're starting out, you don't really need to consider this. Credibility means like how many years you have been working and, and how much you have on your belt. So again, you multiply it by two and you will get the target amount that you should be earning per month, which will then help you rate yourself. 
hopefully that was helpful in some way. Um, okay, so efficiency. Um, efficiency, uh, I think um, a more in-depth explanation of each will be available in my masterclass happening next week on October 28th at 8 p.m. And steps on how to sign up is on the link below. And if you have any questions right now, feel free to comment in the comment section down below and I will try my best to answer it in a bit. All right, step three is really all about collaborating and creating these opportunities for yourself. Um, because everything is so saturated now in this world, we really need to think about how we are going to reach out to other people. So setting out um, clear communication and expectations between you and your client will really help you from preventing any issues from arising. So here are some things you can do when you start communicating. So I'm going to talk about email. And when responding and sending out emails, keep this in mind. First of all, um, address the person in a formal way. So I usually say, dear um, blank. And I really found that to be really useful because at school, at the school that I'm teaching at, there's this one person that always addresses someone with dear blank. And it kind of changes the mood and really presents that person in a very serious and formal manner. And you kind of look at them in a different way. So um, I really recommend doing that first because you haven't really met the person formally. So it's always good to be formal at the beginning. Then um, I've created a couple of templates that really helped me kind of iron out like a bunch of emails and go through them without making like any mistakes. So um, yeah, so those are a couple of things that you need to consider, but I will probably be talking more about what you need to consider for emails in my masterclass. So don't miss out on that. The next thing is phone messaging. Um, it's a really great platform for you to build a quick relationship between you and your client. It's a less formal version of email and it's a really casual way to discuss your rates or um, finalizing any contracts or misunderstandings. But um, anything that has to do with like your contract, you really have to set that in email. Um, but WhatsApp or Viber is a less formal way of approaching it. The next is social media. Um, many companies really find it easier to reach you via social media. Actually, I get reached out more often on social media like Instagram, and then I direct them to my email. So anytime somebody wants to talk to me about rates, I just kind of say, hey, thank you so much for messaging me. Can you go and email me everything that you will need? And I will address it via email. So that way they know that you're serious and that you are ready to present yourself. All right. Um, contracts and payments. And after you have set up your rates and you have clearly communicated any terms of like date and expectations of payments, you need to set up rules for yourself so that you don't feel disappointed or get any, or get angry. So I like to say that like I've made a lot of mistakes in the past in terms of communication and um, so being able to understand the mistakes that I have learned by not communicating properly was really helpful for me to take on in the future. So um, think about your payment terms, when you should be getting paid, and how you should be getting paid. And of course, I'll be going more in depth with that when I am going to speak about that in my master class. So um, yeah, it's just being able to set clear boundaries. And yeah, speaking of boundaries, let me call on Rex again, because I think this part will really help him in the long run. So hey, Rex, are you there? Hello again, everyone. And personally, I'm super excited about this next part. But before you tell me about it, I just want to say that it's super nice that there's someone telling me all about these things. Because kung ako, I wouldn't even know na super dami palang requirements and technicalities to consider. So thank you, Winnie. Thank you. 
Yeah, no problem. I really like sharing knowledge and kind of exchanging that. I know, I'm sure you know some things that I'm not aware about. And um, it really helps people build and succeed together. That's always the great thing, right? And it's, yeah. I feel like that's the least that we can do. Now, going back to setting boundaries, um, I also heard that you started um, your own business with donating your art pieces to help fund the frontliners. And you also... Um, but if ever you start a full-time business and if you're not already, these are some things that you really need to consider, um, especially you because you're a public figure and really some people may take advantage of that and sway you with words. And also like, I think people are more judgmental about your personality if ever you are a public figure. So one of the things that I like to talk about is when things don't work out because there are projects that aren't going to push through. And yeah. um, one of the things is that you really need to be mentally prepared, always prepare for the worst and understand that things aren't going to go your way because clients have different expectations. So um, what are some things that you do Rex, if ever things don't work out? Um, there was this one time because uh, I had a client who, uh, asked for three designs for a logo, pero they didn't push through. They didn't push through with it. And instead, na, yung, like what you said, I have to be mentally tough. I have to be mentally prepared about it. Na, uh, I, I, don't, I didn't focus on the negative side. I just, uh, parang, I'm a pretty chill and positive guy kasi. So if ever something like that happens, I'll just think na, uh, uh, maybe they they wanted to go in a different direction. And personally, I really can't please everyone. So I'll just focus on my craft and uh, parang hindi ko naisipin yung iba. I'll just focus on my craft and I'll just uh, continue doing what I love doing. Yeah, and what Rex said is really correct. Having like a positive mindset and making sure that you kind of don't feel defeated, right? Because I guess that mindset when you're like, oh, that person doesn't like my work, but like, you have to understand that everybody has different tastes and having a positive mindset going forward, saying that, hey, I can always work with other people and not feeling bitter about it is one of the key things that will really help you kind of push through. Um, so you really, um, how do you support yourself if you spent time on your work, right? And make sure you have outlined what will happen if the project cancels. And if you don't deliver up to the expectations or you have creative differences, you really need to decide on how much the client should be giving you in your contract based on how much time you spent on a project. So, for example, um, like you've worked with, um, I've worked with a client before and my logo also didn't push through. They just didn't like it. And I've already done 50% of the work, or like I said, I already submitted the first draft. So you need to really outline in your first draft, like saying, if I have completed my first draft or second draft, then I will charge you X amount, but the rest I won't take. And usually kind of taking an initial deposit is also really good. So make sure that it's all signed and it's all evident. And if you didn't sign anything, then you also need to take it as a hit and say like, oh, I also made a mistake. You really also need to be aware and acknowledge your mistakes as well, right? Yeah. Yeah. So um, being aware about the mistakes that you've made and moving forward with it and taking it on with you as you move forward. So again, these are all things that need to be signed for and completely valid. And just take, uh, if you don't, take it as a hit and move forward. Um, the next thing I also wanted to talk about is burning bridges. Like, I've actually made like mistakes in the past, especially in the beginning. I took a lot of things pretty personally. I don't know if you have, but it's really hard to kind of separate emotion from um, your art because a lot of artists kind of have this ego and just feel like I'm really confident with my work, but why don't people like it? So, I mean, have you ever experienced that? Oh, I know. Uh, siguro, when you, nung sinabi mo na you were also struggling or nasa stress ka rin sometimes, siguro nakarelate ako doon kasi there was this one time na I almost cried painting. While painting, I almost cried because uh, parang nahihirapan ako to find my own style because I really wanted to have my own style kasi when I look at other people's works, sobrang ganda na na, they found their styles. And 
napapressure ako in that sense. So, yung ginagawa ko na lang, uh, uh, I embrace the struggle. Kasi, uh, you, you, there's no other way, there's no other way but to face the struggle. Kasi, for if there are seven weeks, ay, seven weeks, there's seven days in a week, uh, siguro there will be six days that I will be struggling painting. But there's that one final day that will, yung parang, that will make it all worth it. Parang, kasi once you, uh, parang, go through all the struggles and na-achieve mo yung gusto mo, parang, dun mo ma-feel talaga na, okay, this is my style, okay, I found it, and buti na lang, dinaanan ko lahat ng uh, struggles. Yeah. Um, I think one of the, again, like, that really goes back into style and being able to identify it. So just really ironing it out will really help you in the future. So, um, so again, about like ego and having your putting your work out there is a lot of courage, but also being able to kind of take the hits as you go is also another challenge that people have to overcome. So the best way to avoid any future issues from arising is to figure out the best way to communicate. I cannot emphasize how important it is to communicate to another client as clearly as possible, because if you are able to perfect that, then there won't be any issues because a lot of the issues that I found that I have been in, not saying that I'm like troubled some or whatever, it's just that a lot of the issues that I've kind of analyzed in the past, one of the key things that I think I struggle, struggle with here is um, people not paying on time. And it just happens when you're working with big businesses and they have so many people to work with, but it's really your job and you shouldn't feel ashamed to follow up at all. Like you are putting yourself out there, you are giving out your work, then you should also demand for the payment as well. There is no shame in asking for money because you needed to live, you needed to survive and don't be afraid, right? Yeah. Yeah. And um, if you, they're not, don't be afraid to follow up. And if you've provided a service, you shouldn't feel afraid to ask. If they have decided not to pay, um, if you have not been able to identify it in a contract, then, um, or if there's no email track that kind of identifies the mistakes that they have probably made, honestly, I wouldn't argue about it anymore. I wouldn't. Because it's just not worth your time and really emotional energy. I would take it as a lesson and practice session and just go. Because it's just not worth it. It's just tiring to follow up. And it's also emotionally stressful. Um, eventually, it will be worth it in the end. And then the last thing is like if they've ghosted you. Have you ever experienced someone that's ghosted you? I actually recently experienced that. Luckily, I'm deep, uh, deep brown uh, experience. So I've, I'm learning a lot of things, uh, lots of things while listening to you. So oh. uh, I know now what to do next time. Like uh, because I charge my clients, parang after the design. So ngayon, I, uh, because of what you said earlier, parang it's safer to yeah. get in the deposits palagi. So uh, because of that, uh, yun ang gagawin ko. So thanks, thanks, Wendy. Are you there? Yeah. Yeah. So I really appreciate that. Yeah. I'm over here. I'm present. Uh, so to feel really secure, always give final files. And um, when you have received the full payment, then that's when you give the original files. So just make sure that you like consider that and also give them the screenshot only to show that you've completed it. And then when you they receive um, when you receive the payment, then that's when you give the final work. Always make sure that there's something that they need to get in order for you to kind of have some sort of leverage. Because if you give everything, then the ball is on their court. You know, just like volleyball. Yeah. Galing relate mo pa yan. Yeah. So, Winnie, tama nga yung mga sinasabi mo. And uh, while we're still talking, remind ko rin yung mga viewers to keep asking their questions in the section below because Winnie will try to answer them in just a bit. Pero, Pwede bang mauna na ako magdanong, Winnie, uh, about burning bridges? Uh, what if the client naman is a friend? What would you advise? 
if your client is a friend, as I mentioned, communication is key. I've actually had like really bad experiences with close friends. And I realized that it was a lack of communication. So you need to be mentally tough and understand that you might be the one making the mistake. You might be the one not communicating proper, properly and reflect on the situation. Don't get bitter. Really think, hmm, this is a lesson for then you just have to really be able to separate business from friendship. You know, it's really difficult. But again, as I've mentioned, taking away that emotion is so important because a lot of people just bring that all in. I've certainly done so. I don't know about you. You get just so You're passionate right. about it. That's something uh, I have to learn also because uh, this pan in this pandemic, I say this quarantine, lots of... Uh, like mga sixty percent of my clients are friends who started their yung mga small businesses. Because di ba this quarantine and daming mga small businesses that needs logo that needs logos, uh, mga posters. So uh, yun yung kailangan ko matutunan to separate the friendship or yung relationship to work. So yun yeah. Thanks again, Wendy. Yeah, and um, have you started your own business? I didn't ask you that. Uh, ako wala pa because uh, initial before before this episode actually I didn't know where to start where and how to start but you laid all the steps na for me so thanks Winnie and ngayon kasi hindi pa ako napag starts in sa business ko because I'm pretty my hands are pretty full right now Is yun nga I'm a volleyball national athlete and ngayon I also paint and some people don't know na I also work in, for our family business and I also freelance so, medyo hectic yung mga schedules ko ngayon. But in the future, I would also want to start a business. And syempre, naka-inspire rin yung stories mo. And i relate rin either sa painting or sa graphic designing also. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> so, that's all muna. You can focus on your uh, work. So, uh, bye. Bye. See ya in a bit. All right, guys, um, as Rex was saying a while ago about like having his working with his family, it's always good to have that in your pocket, to have experiences working with people that are your bosses or people that um, are guiding you through the process. Because from that, you really learn from these people of what kind of boss you don't want to be and also what kind of boss you do want to be so taking those as experiences like Rex you know working together in, as a team and volleyball and also working with his family those are all important steps in really helping you build your own business and brand and in terms of building your own business and brand like you just need to start from humble beginnings and understand that not everybody is going to know who you are and it's also giving you a good platform to start so one of the things that I wanted to talk about is free work and the taboo around it, like X deals or whatever. It's just like things people don't like to hear um, because they think that it might be a little bit cheap. When I started out, I actually did a lot of free work. I, I just thought that it was the best way for me to practice and get myself out there. So you just really need to humble yourself and understand that these things come with time and eventually people will get to know who you are through your work as you do more. And the more practice, the better. So um, if you aren't receiving any projects, as I've said, the greatest thing to do is to have start out with free work. So here are things you can do to make the most out of your time. Number one is working on a dream project. So I like to pretend sometimes that I'm working for a really big brand. And then the great thing now is that you can tie it in with social media. So pretend like you're hired by a company that you super love and then you do a little project for them. Set out a challenge for yourself and then you can post it on your social media and tag the brand. And sometimes the brand will actually see it and if they like it, they'll repost it. And that's also a way to kind of get yourself out there and while also doing some brand promotion, like brands will be like, hmm, that guy or that person really set out something really cool. So I'm going to 
um, use them and ask them for their rates. And usually they know that you're starting out and they'll like it's a win-win situation on both ends. Then the next thing is about asking your family and community. So usually like when you're starting out, you're really not going to have a lot of opportunities if you don't have like connections or whatever. So when I started out, I tried my best to kind of ask my friends and family. Like I remember I asked my friend who's like they own like a kitchen business. And I was like, hey, do you have any opportunities for me? So I did like a brand book for them. And that was really cool because I felt excited to work with somebody that I knew and was comfortable with. And also they trusted me to do their work. Friends and family are more likely to trust you and give you that opportunity. And if they don't, then move on to somebody else that will trust you. Then the next Next thing is also having the opportunity to reach out to different companies. I think the great thing about Instagram now is that you can actually reach out to them, these brands, and say, hey, I'm here to offer my services. This is what I have. And you can directly message them on their official site, knowing if it's real or not, right? So um, that's one of the things that I think about when I am reaching out to different brands is that I'm able to reach out to the authentic brand through Instagram or Facebook. And usually those are marketing people that are handling it so they can get you connected and they can also assess if you are appropriate for the brand. Okay, speaking of like being appropriate for a brand, I really want to talk about and give you some advice moving forward when starting your business, kind of just to wrap it all up. So the first thing um, you need to be able to do and be brave, have the courage is to ask, okay? There is no shame in asking. I used to be so scared of asking at the very beginning. Um, Don't be afraid to ask for help, okay? The best way to get yourself out there is having no shame, but also setting some boundaries for that as well. Um, Make the most out of your current environment and then flourish from it. The next thing was is also to be organized. That's one of the most difficult things I find um, that um, people like the one of the most one of the biggest challenges people face is being organized. Um, having the necessary doc- documents, making sure you're registered, as I've mentioned in the past, and also um, avoiding any penalties like financial penalties for submitting anything late. Um, prepare for the worst and also hope for the best. So try not to get get caught off guard and always make sure that you are on the top of your game, knowing what you need to submit, knowing how to communicate, be organized. I cannot emphasize that enough. And again, finding the right balance. It's always really difficult at the beginning to receive any projects. And it's often really discouraging because you almost feel like you're not good enough. And You really need to keep that mindset that you need to be your own cheerleader and say, hey, I believe I'm worth it. I believe I have something. But if it's not working out, then also strategize how exactly you can move forward or improve yourself. Looking at new ways and new perspective. If you're hitting, um, if you're trying to like open a lock with the same key that isn't working, then you're not going to open the box. So keep strategizing, keep finding new ways and find that balance. And lastly is really just consistency. Um, I've talked about this earlier. Like one of the biggest problems with people is that like I see them post about and post about their brand and then bring in so much hype and all of a sudden it's like dead silent, you know? And that's just weird because you're building up so much hype and all of a sudden no one can follow through. And the key to keeping your business growing is to make sure you strategize when you're going to post. Don't get too excited and post everything. Strategize how you're going to keep people interested and space out your content. Don't post everything in one week. So make sure you think about that when you are posting. Winnie, right. these are really great insights and advices on the business sides, or business side of things. Pero... Uh, right now you have to shake it up, and uh, right now you have to beat my score. Actually, two lang pala yung score mo. Pero let's see how how high you can get. So, Honestly, I'm a really bad guesser. But <laughs> okay, let's, let's see. Let's see. If you're ready, na nakita mo na ba yung screen? Yeah. 
Consider. Yeah. Wait lang, I'll just focus. <laughs> there. Wait. All right, I'm ready. ready? Damn, yeah, that's a huge improvement from mine, which is just a notepad. Baka, uh, it was unfair kasi yung sa'yo notepad and sa akin iPad. Pero sige, since gentleman naman ako, I'll give you a heads up. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, let's get started in three, two, and one. Three. Broccoli. Poster. Pillow. Makeup. Um, net. Volleyball. Oh. Laptop, laptop, laptop. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Eraser. Um. Uh, milk. Pass, so, pass, pass. Um, ten. <laughs> Sorry, that was pretty hard. That that's easy, I guess. But the time's up, and I think I won. I yeah. got three. I think. <laughs> Which is time's just up. as bad. Yeah, you. <laughs> <laughs> To be honest, I expected that uh, you'd get uh, mga f- seven, eight, nine. Pero, I told you, I'm a really bad guesser. <laughs> Nairapan din ako to draw these things, pero sige, since gentleman naman ako, uh, sinadya ko naman yung kanina that I only guessed two correct answers. So so you could win, syempre. Para you could be happy explain <laughs> your topics. <laughs> so congratulations, Winnie. Congrats. <laughs> I win. It's like my you won by one point. You won by one point. I know. I shouldn't, I shouldn't be so proud about it. Um, yeah, thank you. And that was a really fun challenge. And those who are watching, if you missed today's episode and listen, my master class is available next week on October 28 at 8 p.m. And I'm actually going to be covering what we covered today, but more in depth and um i have really up more my sleeves next up so all you need to do is sign up in the link below okay ngayon naman ay magsasagot tayo ng mga questions so i'll do the asking para naman hindi ka mahirapan so i'll just look for questions we have a questions from at blue road hi miss Win- winnie would you say being in design is a sustainable business Ah, okay, that's a really complicated thing. If you're starting out, maybe yes. Uh, it's not a very sustainable thing. It's just because um, with design or anything with the arts, it's just ebb and flow. Sometimes you just have a lot and sometimes you don't. So I definitely think that in, I actually like to say that don't put all your eggs in one basket. A lot of people might not agree with me. But I like to be more practical. I think about the more financial side of things. I want to be able to live well. So for me, I actually teach as a, I'm actually a high school teacher. And that really helps me kind of have a consistent income. So definitely, like, I feel that being able to have a consistent income really helps with my creative flow, not worrying about how much money I have to earn or taking any projects that I really don't want to. I get to decide what I want to do and kind of push forward with it. So I definitely think that it's not very sustainable, but if you're willing to make sacrifices, then fine. But if you're like me, then then you really need to think about it. Next question is from Yogi John. How to handle burnouts? I'm pinili ko to because I really wanted to uh, know how you deal with burnouts. Uh, you just have to let it all out. I have experienced episodes where I've just cried. Um, burnouts are inevitable, especially, I'm sure you also experience it yeah. as well. Yeah. Um, especially being an athlete and stuff. Uh, you just have to let out all your emotion. And just talk it through. Finding somebody in your life or some friends that are able to just listen to you. It's not easy listening to somebody complain. It's not fun as well. 
maybe for some, I like listening, but for others, it's just very tiring and can get exhausting. So being able to find a support system that is able to cope and help you through your burnout is very important. Ako naman, uh, how I experience or how I deal with burnouts, naghanap ako ng outlet. So sometimes I take a break from painting and uh, what I do kasi parang uh, pag nagka-burnout ako sa painting, that's when I play volleyball. At pag nag burnout naman ako sa volleyball, that's when I do painting. So I'm living the best of both worlds at binabalance ko na lang talaga siya. Yeah. And last question naman ngayon. Um, it's from at new mouse. What is the best software to use when illustrating? All right, this isn't really great for everybody at the beginning because it's kind of expensive. Um, I use Adobe Illustrator, which is part of the creative suite that Adobe offers. But those who are trying to look for a budget-friendly option, like I think that Canva Pro is a great way to start, especially now with the Globe prepaid um, thing. You can really kind of get that for free and trial that for free because you're really just kind of sketching out your ideas and then using Canva Pro to kind of get that all out of your system is a good way to start if you are trying to be as budget friendly as possible. Actually, I uh, tested Canva Pro. Na, uh, it's parang, it's for those who aren't parang super uh, uh, lit or super lit. Uh, alam nila yung mga complicated stuff sa Adobe. So it's more user-friendly kasi drag and drop na lang siya. So it's super nice sa mga uh, hindi pa or sa mga design illiterate. Yeah, it's a good entry way. Yeah. yeah. They, they offer a lot of different nice templates and all of that. So really consider using that. Yeah. Yeah. For, siguro for beginners, no? Canvas Pro is really nice for Kaya kapag hindi ka talaga marunong. Kasi nakita ko yung mom ko. Yung mom ko, nagka-canva, nagka-canva pro din siya. So, ganun siya kadali. Ganun siya kadali. Even yung mga hindi na millennials, kaya nila mag-canva pro. So, I think we've covered... Yeah, a lot of the teachers I know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, I think we've covered all the needed questions na. So, thank you guys. Thank you. And thank you, Rex, for joining me. It has been fun beating you at... Um, Dictionary. Thank you, thank you, Vinny. Thank you, Vinny. And congrats. And ako, I really want to thank you because super dami ko natutunan in this 50 minutes, one hour episode. Sobrang dami ko natutunan. So I hope to uh, see your work soon. And uh, sana mapag collab tayo soon in a way. So yeah. yun lang. Bye, bye, Vinny. Bye. See ya. Thank you. All right, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed the lesson I um, that I gave you in this episode of Go Talk Virtual Hangouts. The series is in partnership with Globe Prepaid and TikTok. So be sure to watch more episodes and you can really learn about a lot about it. And follow us here on TikTok at Enjoy Globe for more Go Talk updates. Again, if you miss today's lesson, you'll be able to catch the special masterclass that I'm holding on October 8th. 28 at 8 p.m. And really, this is a way for you to um, ask any questions that you may have later on. So remember to bring your ideas to life and recreate the way you learn with Globe Prepaid's latest offer, Go 94 Students. Subscribe to this exclusive promo via the Gcash app so you can enjoy 8 gigabytes of data for all sites and apps, plus 1 gigabytes for Go Learn apps free three months of Canva Pro. Plus get only all net text valid for seven days. And guys, do check out our other promos, Go70 and Go50, available for students, exclusive on Gcash. All these threes are yours so that no student is left behind. Thanks again for joining me today. Uh, this is Rex Intal and with Penelope Pop, and I'll talk to you next time. Bye, guys.